teachers and false prophets in every Satan worker there is. Today we got Daniel Adams. Man, there's, uh, I've had a lot of people to expose in the last couple months. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters in Christ, this brother right here has came up to me numerous times by God. And I'm sitting here and now it's time to expose him. Man, if you are following this guy, you are following the devil straight to hell. This man used to have long hair like a woman. And I'm glad that he cut it finally. But man, y'all got to start recognizing who is of God and who isn't by the doctrine that they are presenting out there. If they are following Jesus and if they are following the doctrine of Jesus to the T, not just a little bit, 75%, 85%. No, we talking 100%. If they are not, they are not of God. I don't care how many lying signs of wonders of devils they have. Doesn't mean nothing to me. Moses threw down his stick and it became a snake. Well, so did the magicians in the days of Pharaoh threw down their sticks and it became a snake. So don't, so don't pay attention to the miracles and the wonders that you think is of God. These ain't miracles. These are people that go down to Africa get their powers, uh, their warlock powers, and they use them to show, hey, look, I got the Holy Ghost, look at me. And y'all following this, and this is what y'all want. Never mind the word of God. Never mind them even matching up with the word of God. You just want what they want. You want, you, oh, I want to be delivered. Man, don't you know that Jesus Christ is the deliverer? You need to go to Christ. That's who I went to. Deliver me from masturbation. Deliver me from lust. Deliver me from a uh, weed addiction that I had my whole life. Deliver me from my mouth that I couldn't control. Man, Jesus is in the, in the business of deliverance. Only he don't charge money. They do. And you should know the difference. This is his foolishness. Let's see what, let's see what God talked to him. He had a dream from God. And it was about social media. <laughs> like God is God, God in social media going to tell you to use social media. Listen, we use social media to bring the truth to God. But man, I got my word of God with me nonstop everywhere. Yes, we can get to people. Yes, we can do that. But at the end of the day, we supposed to go out into the streets and talk to people, man. Jesus went for the lost. I want y'all to understand who we dealing with. This is a money hungry, greedy man that is using God's name and God's word as a prophet. He's got ads on his YouTube videos to get that money. He's charging $75 to come to the show to come see him and his buddies that they all don't agree in one. One believe in the Trinity and he got Marcus Rogers over here that believe in, in one God. You know, this is where they compromise the word of God for money. Money's more important to them. Follow the money and you'll see who these people are. Do you think these people would be preaching the word of God if they was not getting money or they wasn't getting tax free on things when it comes to the church? These people are greedy wolves, man. Hired. They're hired by the devil to promote, promote a, 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 a God. But it's not God. Their God is Satan because money is Satan. Oh, I warned you about these greedy wolves in sheep's clothing. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters for he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and serve mammon. Mammon is money. Wealth. 
You cannot serve God and money. We don't have no to go fund me. We don't charge money for Bible studies. We don't charge money uh, 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 to get the gospel on the streets. We don't charge money to deliver people. We don't charge money to cast out devils. And we sure don't charge money to preach the gospel. You will never see no to go from me on my account. You'll never see me anything begging for money. All this is free. I would feel ashamed to charge money or get some kind of money for uh, doing God's work. This ain't no joke. People are going to end up in hell uh, 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 taking in money for the gospel, for healing, for changing others, for prophecy. There are people out there that are charging money to, to, to interpret your dreams. So foolish. How can God's people be this foolish? Matthew 10, 7. And as ye go, God says, this is Jesus speaking. And as ye go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Meaning Jesus is here. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Those that have diseases. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received and freely ye get, uh, give. God's very clear about this subject. And some of y'all paying $75 to go see a bunch of devils in one. Look at this stuff. False teachers always flock together. The more money they can get out of you, man, the poorer you are. Foolish to give your money to people like this. They supposed to work for God, yet they're being paid to, uh, 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 to see them and talk. To feel good about yourself. Don't you know they use certain words to bring emotions out? Like, uh, uh, what is it called? America's Got Talent? They put music over things to bring emotion out of you. These people do the same thing. Man, God talks about how there will be many false teachers and false prophets in the last days. And even God's elect would be deceived. So sad. Always remember, false teachers always flock together. So this is a forerunner conference with all these false teachers right here. Right. Every single one of them. Pay attention to the names. None of these people are of God. Notice this stuff. Let's keep going down. The tickets are non-refundable. How much are these tickets? We would we would ask, right? How much are these tickets? Are they free? They got to be free, right? They're seventy five dollars for 18 and over. And not only that, uh, you know, when you get a charge for uh, using your credit card, you got to pay the service fee on top of that. To go see these people. Who are these people? Why are you making men celebrities? There's only one celebrity, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Sold out, fools. Joel Osteen charged money for go see, uh, go see him. Who is he? When did he charge money for the gospel? When did Paul, when did the, 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 the apostles uh, uh, charge money for the gospel? Man, Paul had a job. His job was a tent maker. Peter was a fisherman. That was his occupation. Jesus was a carpenter. He didn't charge money for the gospel. What are we doing? And you're not even getting the word of God in this place. All you're getting is uh, 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 fake illusions, fake devil stuff, fake stuff to bring emotion out of you. To think that these people have the Holy Ghost when they don't have the Holy Ghost. They're not even of God. What has happened to God's people where they want these deliverance ministries over the word of God? God said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap themselves teachers. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. These people are acting like teachers of God, and yet they don't teach God's word. Having itchy ears. Look at the says in verse four. And they turn away their ears from the truth 
You have turned your ears away from real people of God that are out there giving you the word of God to be fed spiritually. And you want this mess. You want these things. You, you, you want to be healed so bad. You're going to the wrong source. They will turn their ears from the truth. They will make fun of people like me. They will turn their ears away from us. The ones that are giving you the real word. The ones that stand on the word. The ones who work for God. Man, I done spoken tongues. I done casted out devils. I done prophesied. I done had dreams and visions of God. That don't make me of God. Obedience is what makes me of God. Standing on God's word when everybody turns their back on God's word. That's what makes a man of God. A man that won't compromise the word for no one, no thing and nothing. His life is dedicated to God. And y'all being deceived. I see it. I see it. Satan knows what you want too. Satan knows what you want with your flesh. And he uses it against you. And they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables, fairy tales. It's what you want. You want a great fairy tale, but it's not real. He's only leading you off a cliff to hell. He doesn't even know the word of God. I've sat here and listened to this man talk. He doesn't know what verses are. He doesn't know what these things are. He's not a preacher. He's not called. Wake up. $75. That's for just being a, 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 a member of his. Look at it says. Non-refundable. You know they're not giving your money back if you don't show up. $100 if you're not a member. And look at the kids, even charge kids, $45. Are y'all nuts? Are y'all nuts? God already told you about this. Micah 3.11, the heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. That's you. That's you that's following this man and listening to me speak. God is in the business of healing for free. You think God care about money? The heads thereof judge for a reward. Their head people, the pastors, judge for a reward. My reward is in heaven. My riches and stuff like that is laying in heaven. My crowns of righteousness, the crowns of this is waiting for me in heaven. That's the real reward. Money is no reward, y'all. Money is nothing to God. And the priest thereof teach for hire. Hi, I do anything. Look, I do some miracles. Hire me. Prophets thereof divine for money. They divine for money. Wake up. Wake up. They're all greedy wolves. They live off your money. You should be giving your money to the poor. As God commanded, not to greedy wolves like this. And Jeremiah 23, 14, never strengthen the hands of evildoers. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. So there's a horrible thing with the prophets in Jerusalem. They commit adultery. Don't you know that this man is uh, divorced and remarried three times? Did y'all know that? <laughs> this guy's an a living adulterer married to his third or fourth wife he's going to admit it too I'm going to show you they commit adultery 
and walk in lies. They walk in lies, y'all. He believe in the Trinity. We're gonna, he believe in women pastors. We're going to go into everything that he believed because he made a mistake. He posted what he believes in. And we're going to break everything that he believes down with the Holy Scriptures. They strengthen the hand, also the hands of the evildoers. Don't you know that you are strengthening the hands of evildoers, those that are charged money for the gospel or deliverance or any of that stuff? You are strengthening the hands of the evildoers. God is condemning that behavior. That none do if return from his wickedness. They are at all of them unto me as Sodom and in the habits thereof as Gomorrah, God says. That's how serious it is. Isaiah 9, 16, for the leaders of these people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. If you are following any of these people, Marcus Rodgers, Alan Parr, Lavoy Ellis, T.D. Snakes, Joel Osteen, Isaiah Salvador, Joyce Meyer, every one of those people that's in that conference. All these people, and we're going to expose every one of them. I just, ain't, I just can't do it all at once. Daniel Adams, if you are following these people, you are leading, these people are leading you off a cliff to hell. Now you say, Kurt, why don't you expose uh, gay pastors and, and women uh, uh, and stuff like that, stuff that it's obvious. Why do I need to uh, expose people that's obvious, a gay pastor? If you're following the gay pastor, you are a fool. You already know you're on the way to hell. I don't need to expose him. He exposes himself. But it's those that are hiding their, their doctrine and hiding their ways that's leading you off a cliff to hell that you don't even know is the ones we need to go after. Because this is the number one, peop uh, number one things that are leading y'all to hell. These are the number one. The number one thing leading most people to hell is uh, uh, false teachers, false prophets. Change and loss is real, but the Lord is exalting you in this season so that your family can see the glory of the Son, Jesus Christ, and they can come to salvation through Him. Hey, hey stop scrolling. I need a few seconds of your time. Before I continue, I have to get this out of the way. Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having an awesome time with friends and family, and Jesus is the centerpiece of it all. Remember? This dude's a liar. Not only does he uh, be, uh, believe in many lies from the devil and, and teaching y'all the lies, he's also a, a preaches from the New King James Version, the notorious one for the Trinity. But he's also teaching you to celebrate pagan holidays. Man, how could y'all be so deceived? Listen, I was deceived once. I was in Joel Osteen Church. I was in a... a uh, sending Peter Popoff money uh, and stuff like that when I was uh, young in the faith. But when I started getting in the word of God, I learned the truth. I learned that these are devils and they go against God's word. Don't you know that I got tired of people telling me over and over again, the uh, 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 this and that and all this other stuff. What I did, I said, you know what? They all saying a hundred different things. I'm going to learn the word of God myself. And Jesus taught me everything. And it was times where I sat in that room, sat in that thing by myself. Why people made fun of me and this and that. What are you doing? Did, what are you doing? No, I wanted to learn who God was and I was going to force myself. The devil was not going to stop me from getting in that word of God. And God taught me everything. A man that celebrates pagan holidays is not of God and he's weak. There is no, no scripture that says Jesus was born on December 25th. That's the lie we're being told. And these are the lies these men are taught, are taught to teach you. Do you know why they teach that? It's because if they was to go against it, they would have a lot of people going hating them. A lot of people saying, no, it's Jesus, this, that. No. We don't compromise the word of God for no one. And pagan holidays should not be celebrated. Now let's read what he believes. This is his doctrine. Let's figure it all out here. With the rise of social media, a lot of movements have been able to birth in Christianity. First of all, the word Christianity is not even in the word of God. And that sounds like some devil spirit anyway. Christianity. Like you're putting some kind of spell on someone. 
If you don't even know that Christianity is not even the word of God, what are you doing? Including the one I have founded called the supernatural life. Well, God had founded our church. God had founded me. Uh, I didn't found nothing. Just so you know, you can see pride right there. The supernatural life and a lot of times these carry something very attractive, which pulls a lot of people towards them. Here we go with the good words, good speeches, trying to give you a good little dee -dee -dee, and then they're going to sell you on something. Listen, man, you can't hustle a hustler. I think it is very important that we solid solidify what we believe doctrinally. So here we go. He's going to give us his doctrine. Finally, it's been a, it's been a while. I mean, I'm not scared of anything. I'll tell you what our doctrine is. And not just play the middle ground in order to keep favor. That's what he does. He plays the middle ground. And we're going to go into it. I'm going to show you some videos of how he plays the middle ground. And a lot of these pastors do so, so they don't upset you. They don't get that unfollow button. I don't care about followers. You can unfollow me tomorrow. What do I care? I'm not getting no money out of this. What do I care about followers anyway? Middle ground in order to keep favor with man and not offend for the sake of keeping the peace. I'm a new covenant believer. Ooh, okay. I believe in the repentance of sins and turning to our beautiful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. 100% agree. I believe in the blood of Jesus that covers the sins of the cosmos, whatever that means. No scripture says that Jesus' blood covers the cosmos. I believe in the trin. Oh, I believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's a lie. There is no Trinity in the Word of God, and we're going to learn that. We're going to show you videos on how a man rebukes him. Uh, uh, if you want to dig deeper, understand of that and Google it, so he don't want to cause no problems. See how he, see how these man these weak men. I tell you what, man. I'm not scared of anybody questions. In fact, if you leave a if you leave a question there, guess what? Kurt going to answer you. And Kurt, if you leave some bad message, Kurt going to answer you. See, I don't think I'm famous. I don't think I'm better than uh, 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 to, than to talk to you. We all on the same. We all on the same earth, same man. And no one's better than the next. Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So he believes that one God and three people. Trinity is a lie that came out in the third century. Uh, never came from the word of God. Uh, it was uh, brought to us by the Catholics that brought this doctrine. Y'all need to wake up from this Catholic uh, uh, doctrine that has infiltrated the Christian churches. Because it's leading many people to hell. Because you can say Jesus Christ is God, but he's not Father God. That makes two gods, y'all. So, so you don't even believe that Jesus Christ is God. And there's going to be a man that's going to expose it. So he says, if you want to dig deeper, understand of that, Google it. I believe we are saved through grace, through faith in Jesus Christ and not by our works. So no man can boast. Oh, so here we go. Here's a man that believes in once saved, always saved. And uh, faith alone, all they got to do is believe. Well, see, that contradicts his belief because he says he believes in repentance of sins. But if you are a believer in just faith alone, uh, uh, that means that you don't have to repent for your sins or get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Go down the water. <clears throat> so it's a contradiction. This is a double minded man. And God says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. This is a clear contradiction. And there's many things that say, let me show you. We went over this the other day. Uh, lukewarm Christians love to bring up the verses saved by faith to imply their faith is the only thing that saved. That's why they bring it up. They bring it up because they think that uh, a faith is the only thing that saved. But that's not true. The reality is that many things saved. And it's a uh, stepping stone to get there, right? For by grace you are saved through faith. And not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Yeah, you ain't had to do nothing to attain a, 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 a grace. It was a, it was a gift given to you when you believe. But look what else saves, hope saves. For we are saved by hope. Mark 16, 16, he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. So he that believed and then he gets baptized shall be saved. So faith plus water baptism saves, right? Water also water baptism saves. The uh, one Peter three twenty one. The like figure where unto even baptism does also now save us. Look at this. Even women that have 
that are living, living for the world and prostituting and doing other things that are not of God, partying and, and dancing and drinking and smoking can be saved by having children because that child saves them. And it's a blessing from God to have children. So 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity, uh, given without looking for something in return, and holiness with sobriety. Look what else saves. The word of God saves. Jesus saves because Jesus is the word of God. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So they that hear the word of God can be saved through the word of God. Not your opinions and not your way of thinking. The word of God saves people, not you. And I think you need to get, we need to get over ourselves and start giving them the word and stop giving them what you feel. What else saves uh, 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 God? If we stay holy and guard ourselves from sin and wicked people, we can be saved, as God says. And ye shall be hated of all men for my, for men, all men for my name's sake, God said. So we're going to be hated for Jesus Christ's name and we're going to be hated for preaching and teaching the gospel and saying what God said. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So it's not just one thing that saves what they tell you. In fact, they're going to get mad at this. Let me tell you something. These ones say, always say lying devils uh, that teach that doctrine. They get mad as they ever could be when you tell them, well, many things say, so what? Doesn't say you're going to heaven. They don't like to hear that. These are steps to get to heaven, steps to be saved. It's not just one step. If you was to just step over, uh, 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 it's not one step to get to heaven. And that's what they need to understand. They're liars. Pay attention to anybody that brings up Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And, and, and leaves out and, 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 and brings up verse nine, but never brings up verse 10. Which we'll say, uh, uh, your, uh, 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 by your works. Let me show you this. So it says in Ephesians chapter two, verse nine, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. But then they always leave out verse 10 on purpose. For we are his workmanship, workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works right good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them not one not in him or in this or in that it's plural them walking in the commandments one scripture says fear god and keep the commandments but well, this is the whole duty of man faith is just the beginning lord ladies and gentlemen Notice the last part, all the way to the end. Also, with all the arguing on water baptism here, oh, maybe we'll get his take on water baptism. Also, with all the arguing on water baptism, here is my stance. Baptism in water does not save you. Baptism in water does not save you. What a liar. I just read to you two verses in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, and in Mark 16, 16, where it talks about water baptism does save you. In fact, I've seen it firsthand where people have changed their lives because of water baptism. Do we just stop there at water baptism? No. That's when the war begins with the devil. Now, if that is a belief you hold, repent. We hold on to what Jesus said, not what you say, Daniel Adams. Because you are putting people back under works, just like circumcision. Now, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's talking about the Old Testament where the law killeth uh, uh, back then where they stoned you to death when you, did, uh, when you committed sin. But over here we have mercy where we can repent and move back to God. Uh, 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 get back to God. One scripture says in one John chapter one, verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But don't just take that for granted, because in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it says, for if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. 
So if you come to the knowledge of God and you're still doing the opposite of what God told you to do, there's no sacrifice for sins for you. Don't pay attention to these liars. Baptism is good as a declaration of your faith. So you see he's playing both sides. Well, I don't want to get them so upset. I don't want them to get so mad at me that they just turn my channel off and unfollow me and stop sending me their money. Now, so he's playing both sides. And these what these, these devils do. They're double-minded. They, 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 the money talks and everything else walks. But it has nothing to do with you going to heaven. Liar. Jesus said, unless a man be born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Who should we believe, him or God? Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. So we got to get washed. In fact, that's 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 told from the Old Testament to the New Testament, uh, where you got to go down the water, be clean. Now, in order for us to be born again, we got to go down in the water. The old man dies and the new man comes alive. Right. And of the spirit. So you got to be born of the spirit too. meaning you when you go down in that water. You inherit the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to show you this. So don't you think I just made that up. And once you have the Holy Ghost living and dwelling in you. That's when a man turns from his sin. So he's actually robbing people of the Holy Ghost and he doesn't even know it. And he's going directly against Jesus Christ's word. Because he said, except a man be born of water, water and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is God's word. Never mind him. What a liar, right? Well, he cast it out. Devil. Look at all the things he's touching people. They falling back like fools. Man, don't you know that nobody will fall back if they knew nobody was behind them? Ain't nobody falling back if nobody behind them. They would crack their head and crack their skull. Man, y'all being played. Oh, Kurt, you're in Acts. You must be Pentecostal. You must be uh, apostolic. That's a hell no. I ain't no apostolic crap where they add on to the word of God or they are uh, 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 telling you about religion and bumping, jumping around and bumping on each other and all that yelling in the mic. And I say, oh, uh, and I say, oh, uh, 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 and they act like they can't even breathe, look like they about to die. I saw a kid one time trying to play that little game, play that church and, and that religion. And that man almost almost died because uh, he could he wasn't because he, uh, he wasn't breathing while he was talking, yelling in the mic. Your father, I mean, and then you got to wear a suit and tie everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? That's what they tell you. You got to wear a suit and tie. You can't wear shorts and they can't wear sandals and they ain't got a scripture that says none of that. That's adding on to the word of God. Don't follow fools like that. Don't follow these religions. Don't play church with them. Right. But I bring up Acts because Acts is very important. Now, again, Acts ain't the only book in there. Apostolics and Pentecostals. So y'all need to get up out your little Acts and get off on the other scriptures, too. If your pastor is going through Acts for a whole year or two, or you ain't been to no other scriptures in the New Testament, you need to get up out of that church. All your apostolics and Pentecostals. Apostolic and Pentecostal is a religion that was made up in the 1900s. Some of them believe in the Trinity and some don't. But it's a it's a big time billion dollar business like these fools. Uh, a lot of them people that uh, are, are Daniel are dealing with are apostolic and Pentecostal. All right. Acts 238. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. So you got to repent, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Unless a man be born of water, baptized and, 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 and go and, and of the spirit, meaning you got to be born of the spirit. And once you're born of the spirit, you're going to uh, obey God and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, there's many signs of the Holy Ghost, y'all. Uh, speaking in tongues, casting out devils, uh, healing the sick, uh, many signs of the uh, uh, gentleness, uh, love, compassion, all these things. Right. But the main thing here is obedience to God's word. If they are not obeying God's word, they don't have the Holy Ghost. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, this brother does not have the Holy Ghost. He's going directly against God's word. See me bring up Acts 2.38 for a reason. Because we're going to keep on going down. Let's get this. Baptism is a good as declaration of faith, but it has nothing to do with going to heaven. Liar. Jesus Christ rebuked that mess. And put whatever you want in the comments. You're not changing my mind. 
I've been under the legalistic mess in the past. So he, uh, so uh, uh, this is what they do. They say you're legalistic because you stand on God's word. These are these type of people. They call you have a religious spirit. Hey, you have a religious spirit because you're trying to obey God. And I don't want to obey that scripture right there. I'm going to just cross that out. That's what, they, that's what the lukewarm, a.k.a. the fake Christians try to do. Listen, man, listen. If you're struggling with sin, let me tell you something. You can be born again. You can live holy for God. God requires it. Uh, uh, one scripture says, "Without uh, follow peace, try to follow peace with all men and holiness, or no man shall see God." So you got to live holy. Um, also, I do not care if you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or in the name of Jesus. It's either it's either good either way. Well. Nobody was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I've done numerous videos on this. So in case y'all are looking for it, look up baptism, look up these things. Nobody was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus said to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And that name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. They either got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus, God Jesus. All right. So it is a big deal. And he's robbing you of the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that the Catholics tried to change the baptism formula from Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, from Jesus Christ to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and was successful at it? Look it up. But let's keep going. Again, I've done sermons on this numerous times. But if you are of Jesus' only doctrine, why wouldn't we be only Jesus' uh, doctrine? Is not that the gospel of the New Testament, the gospel of Jesus Christ? God, Jesus, it, uh, but if you are a Jesus only doctrine, you are in, also in error. Repent. Who is this fool to tell me I'm in error for doing what God said? See, and look, he said, and you shove Acts 238 down people's throats. Yeah, we tell people about Acts 238. It's one of the most important verses there is. Baptize, inherit, repent. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's very important. I can show you, I can show so many places in the scripture that refutes that. Uh, it refutes what God says. Okay. And also the Greek understanding of it. Oh, uh, you know, you know they always gotta go to Greek and Hebrew. Anytime the Greek and Hebrew changes the word of God. Stay the hell away from that. Let me tell you that. The King James Version lines up 99.9% with the Dead Scrolls. And God led me to the King James Version before I le uh, led to any of them other corrupt versions. Stay away from that stuff. Stay in the King James Version. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to understand. But you got to get in there. You got to learn these things. You know, them words, uh, sometimes I got to Google to say, I don't know what this word means. I got to understand. I, I just got to, I got to work hard. And a lot of us are not willing to do that. You want words changed. You want verses take it out. Like this dude wants. Just keep going. Drinking he bear. I am also 100 a grace guy and not the hyper grace mess that condone sin, liar. He's playing both sides. He's once saved, always saved. He's telling you not to be, he's telling you to be baptized and not to be baptized. He's telling you to repent of your sins, but really it doesn't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're not going to make it to heaven. They're liars. You just got to dig deeper to what they believe in. Man, thank the Lord for, 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 for getting him to expose him on his own self. I am also a, a grace guy. All right. I believe God's grace is so good. Oh, here we go. Ah. Anybody that tell you, they saying something like that, they leading you up to a cliff and about to push you off it into hell. Because grace of God, they never taught nobody to sin. Grace is so good. And when it is understood, you wouldn't want to sin any longer. Yeah, that, no, no doubt about it. Faith in Christ, but you can lose the grace of God by sinning. Let me show you that. Yeah, these old devils. Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God's asking the question here. 
God condemns it. God said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Gentlemen, he's playing both sides. He's living in sin. Uh, Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You know the graces. Verse 15. What then? They always leave this next verse out. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. God condemns that behavior. Let's keep going. Faith in Christ makes us righteous. Nothing more. Look at that. Isn't that a clear contradiction? He is faith only. Once saved, always saved. He said faith in Christ makes us righteous. Nothing more. He says up there <coughs> that I need to. Well, I'm not telling you not to sin and I don't want you to sin and this, that. But yet it doesn't have no significance on your salvation. I'm telling you to repent. But again, it doesn't have you don't have to repent to make it to heaven. He's a liar. Faith is not the only thing in the word of God. Faith is important. But faith is not the only step to make it to heaven. If that was the case, the devil would be in heaven right now. Because, hey, they all believe. But they was kicked out. Why? Because of sin. I believe in, in a heaven to, grant, to gain and a hell to lose. So that makes no sense. <laughs> this stuff is just contradictory. I believe in that amazing baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism you should really want. Well, see, he excludes baptism of the water because he's saying it's just water. I mean, it's just spirit, but it's actually the water and spirit. So he's taking away water baptism, which is the real baptism. The Holy Spirit that comes upon us is 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 is, is God's spirit living and dwelling in us and we become one spirit with God and that turns us away from sin. See, he doesn't understand none of this. He shouldn't be preaching nothing and all this other stuff. Look, let's keep going. That's what really is going to light you on fire. You know, the devil has fire too, so that you know that. It comes straight from Jesus. I am a power of God in signs and wonders, guys, all day. That's what he is. That's what he ain't preaching no word. He's he telling you right here, he's going against the word of God. In fact, his, his wife is a woman pastor. Ain't no such thing as no woman pastor. I believe the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So do we uh, are in operation today and can operate to anyone willing to be used by Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus came in the flesh. What does that mean? It means God manifested in the flesh. I believe Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% man. That's not nothing about that makes sense because God is an invisible spirit and that spirit lives and dwells in Jesus Christ. Flesh and blood is not God. What lived in Jesus was God. Uh, Jesus is the image in the body of God. He'll tell you that he's God. But once he's questioned about is he God the father? No, he's not God the father. So that's a clear contradiction. That's what the Trinity believes. And we're going to go all into it. Just give me a moment. I want to read you everything that he believes in. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, we believe that as well. Jesus is the word wrapped in flesh. I uh, don't know what that means. He did what no man could do. No duh, because it was God living and dwelling in him. All our humanistic efforts to please God were never enough. So he came and made a way uh, uh, where there was no way. Yes, we believe that. He first loved us, so from the place, oh, here we go with the love part. He loved him. We can't love him enough through our self-righteous efforts. So basically he's telling you that you don't need to obey God right here. We can't love him enough through our self-righteous because you're supposed to live righteous. You're supposed to live holy for God. God commands it. In fact, he commands you to live perfectly. But we can sure, but we sure can love him enough by accepting his love for us. But well, no duh. Well, Jesus loved everyone, but don't forget. J uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So God can hate things, all right? Uh, also, the James faith without works verse. Don't throw that at me either. It won't work. So he's playing both sides. He's telling you faith alone right here. I work for grace and love and not because I'm getting some. Yeah, yeah you're getting money, buddy. You're probably a millionaire to how many? $75 a show. Don't throw at me because faith without works, obedience is dead being alone. That's why he's telling you not to throw that at him. In fact, we did a whole three-part sermon on that 
Make sure you check it out on YouTube, BitChu, and uh, the other ones, uh, uh, Rumble, and everything else. Uh, we're not just putting this thing on YouTube because YouTube is evil, and they're trying to get rid of people like us. So I'm hiding in the shadows. All right, let's keep reading because this gets interesting at the end. I work from grace and love, not because I'm getting some reward. Yes, you are getting reward. You're a liar. This dude is a j I mean, I just sit here and look at some of these people's things, and they're liars. He's wealthy because of the word, uh, because of uh, his little deliverance ministry. I'm getting some reward, but because I simply love Jesus, liar. Everything must be done from love or it's worthless. Agreed. Love is the key to real faith and real works. All the rest of it is whatever, whatever that means. That is mo that's probably one of the most foolish statements I've ever read. Love is the key to real faith and real works. All the rest of it is whatever. Everything else doesn't matter. Just love, 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 love. Oh, let me put this here to two. So this doesn't pop up later. <laughs> here we go. I believe in women preachers. Also, it's biblical. Don't throw the Corinthians mess at me. I ain't hearing it to go deeper. Well, I'm going to throw the Corinthians at you real quick. How about that one? Because I don't care about what you what you think or your opinion let's go to what god said you know you know what's sad these people know it's wrong but they don't care money's more important to them they'll compromise the word of god for anything because that's what he said don't throw the key because he knows it's wrong he just don't want to hear it but i want y'all to observe it so y'all don't get tricked by these devils 1 corinthians 14 33 for god is not the author of confusion y'all god ain't confused he's confused we ain't confused but a peace as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also say the laws. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, woman? Or came it unto you only, woman? God condemns women preachers. Make sure you check it out. We expose all women pastors, apostles, evangelists, preachers, deacons, bishops, elders, and priests that are women. They are Jezebels and they are rebellious against God, which is a sin of witchcraft. Make sure you check it out. Wife a preacher? Is my wife a preacher? Yes. She she can she can she can give out the good news of the gospel, yes. Is she a preacher? Is she a preacher? She can preach, yes. She is is, is she a preacher, a preacher yes. though? I'm just trying to ask, because I think I read that she is a preacher. Is that true? Is she a preacher? Simple question. She preaches, yes. She's a preacher. But is she a preacher? When you say a preacher, that means a preacher. You know how somebody... you are a preacher, right? Yeah, You're yes. My, is your wife, wife a preacher? My wife is. See, he knows it's wrong. He don't want to answer it because he's uh, looking for, uh, doesn't want to get feedback, doesn't want to get problems with it, right? So, you know, I'm if I, if I'm if I'm saying if I don't believe in something or I do believe in something, I'm gonna just tell you. I'm not gonna try to uh, 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 trick you out of a question. Not try to answer it. That would be deceiving or a deceiving tactic of the devil. He's scared to answer that question because he doesn't want the repercussions for it. It's a weak, weak man. When you say a preacher, that means a preacher. You know means how somebody. you are a preacher, right? Yeah, You're yes. My, is your wife, wife a preacher? My wife is a preacher so, of the gospel. So why did you let her become a preacher? Why did I let her become a preacher? Right. Yeah. Uh, the same reason you see women women preaching the gospel in in the uh, Bible. But that's because they are nowhere in the Word of God did any woman preach or teach God's word. That's a lie. He's doing it for feelings and stuff like that. He's a liar. In the Bible, they don't preach. They're not preachers in the Bible. But let me ask, why did you let your wife become a preacher? Do you believe in the order of God and Christ? Christ and man, man over woman, and woman over children? My, my, wife's, my wife is submitted to me in Christ. Yes. Do you believe in that order? God and Christ? Christ and man, man over woman, and woman over children? 
Yes. It's in, in the. It's not in the nature of a woman to lead. She doesn't have it in her to lead. It's in her to follow. And if a woman is pretending to be a preacher, she's saying that she's a leader. Why would you let your wife pretend that she's a leader? He's right. Only uh, we don't follow, as men, we don't follow women. And this is why God never made the man the head of the household, and this is what he's bringing up. But never mind the man on the left. He, he doesn't even believe that Jesus Christ is God. Um, and he doesn't believe in the word of God himself. He quotes it, and it's crazy. But the man on the right, Daniel Adams, I'm more worried about. This is who we expose it. He believes in the order of God, man over woman. But yet when it comes to man being the head of the woman at home, he's also uh, he can't be the tail at church. So this is why he's bringing that up to catch him in a contradiction, a clear one. Man, you can catch these devils by the word of God, y'all. Now he's going to bring up a verse to try to justify women preachers. Look at this. Wait till you hear this. Jesus, hold on. When Jesus rose again and, and, and Mary was sitting there, and the women were there. They went and they told everybody about it. So people listened to those women, right? Right. About the goodness. So why did those people listen to those women about Jesus Christ? Be it's a deceiving tactic. Oh, the women saw the Jesus uh, and, and it wasn't in the tomb. And they went and told everybody about, hey, uh, 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 Jesus rose. Jesus not there in the tomb no more. That's automatically preaching and teaching God's word. Can you imagine that? Stand, they were standing in the church. It's a lie. These are these deceiving men. They use anything to justify a woman preacher because women preachers bring money to them. Remember that. Women preachers bring money to these people. And if he can have his wife preaching in the pulpit where he could take half the money because, hey, listen, whatever she gets is mine anyway. We're married. So these are the devils. Devils. They can't even stand on God's word. And yet y'all following these people. And you think he's of God because he got many followers. So does Satan have many followers. So what? So what? So does Joel Osteen, the devil there is. T.D. Snakes. They all got big time followers. What does that mean? Jesus was hated by men. Because he stood on his word. Said there wasn't no woman pastor. Said man is the head of the woman. And all these other things. Uh, that there's one God and I'm God manifested in the flesh. This is what he believes when it comes to the Trinity. Look at it. I want to show you how biblically Ill illiterate this guy is, uh, Daniel Adams. Listen to this. Well, how could he be talking to his father if he is the father? If he was God, how can he be talking to the father if he is the I didn't say Jesus was the father. Mm. You said he, he, was is the, he is the son, father, son, Holy Spirit. But you said he was God. Yes, he is God. And so why did he say for, tell someone else to forgive them? They know not what they do. Why not just say, I forgive y'all. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. I forgive you. See, this is the problem. These two men don't believe. Uh, 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 one believes that he's the son of God, meaning he's not God. Uh, when the son of God just means God. Uh, just ask the Muslim to confess that. And then you got this other guy telling you that Jesus Christ is the son of God and God, but he's not father God. Both of these people are in error. They shouldn't be teaching or preaching nothing. Because flesh and blood is not God. It's what lived in Jesus that made him God. All right? Uh, we don't give credit to the flesh because Jesus never gave credit to the flesh. He said, why you call me good? There's none good but God. But at the same time, he said, uh, I am the good shepherd. I am the great I am. I am Alpha and Omega. But these men don't know how to explain that. Jesus never pointed to flesh, say, hey, look, give credit to flesh. He pointed to the spirit that dwelled in him. Give, and he's the one that doeth the works. They don't understand none of this stuff. And it's sad that this man is teaching. Any man that confessed that Jesus Christ is God but not Father God, he doesn't believe that he's God. He's got two gods. Now we got an old magician trick that many of these false teachers and false prophets use. And it's a deceiving tactic to make you think that he healed the man's foot. But look at this. Let me show you this. Pretty obvious to most people at home. As uh, Whenever you see them do this on YouTube, there's always a point. They bring the legs up, then they ask for the camera to come in. And all that's happening at that point is they just loosen one shoe. Not the shoe we're all looking at, but the other shoe. All the trick is going to be is, while we're talking about this, this 
leg lengthening, I'm just moving this shoe, just sliding it back on the back on the heel. It's a very old classic faith healer trick. But there's all sorts of other things I can make it sound like. Like I know this is going to hurt your hamstrings doing mm. this for a while. So I can say to you, you can feel this pain, can't you? So when we do this, and I say, and that pain's gone, isn't it? I lower your legs. You honestly will say yeah, yes, yeah. but you're talking about this hamstring pain because of this. It's nothing to do with your spinal Abs pain. Absolutely. Likewise, when you stand up, you're not limping. There's no limping. Well, you weren't limping before. Mm. No one said you. you didn't say you were limping. No, no. You touch your toes, jump around. You could do those things anyway. Absolutely. We said earlier on you're in pain all the mm -hmm. time, but it's not in your spine. It's all over the place. But I can say to you at the end of that, and your spine is, how's your spine feeling? It's fine. It's fine, because yeah. it wasn't hurting anyway. Yeah. It is the leg lengthening trick that is absolutely the mark of a charlatan. Mark of a charlatan. As I told you in time past, false teachers always flock together. Never forget that. I would never walk with somebody with a lie. In fact, recently, somebody wanted me to walk with somebody that believed that God had a mother. That flesh and blood is God. It'd be a cold day in hell before I stand with a lie. And all you that are compromising the word of God because you want to get along and all this other stuff. Jesus didn't come for the uh, peace. He came for division. So all y'all that are compromising the word of God are weak men and weak in faith. I would never walk with a lie. But let's keep going. Please, I'm going to use your gift today. Forgive me. You know what the sad part is you think these people of God use a magician tricks on you. <laughs> Chase on crazy. Right leg line up right now. Jesus. So you hit with me. Look, you won't have another problem. Serious, your knees are good. Amen. See, guys, man, Jesus. That's it. Just Jesus. Say this with me. In Jesus' name. You ready? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Naturally, a person always has a leg longer than the other. You've heard of that, right? A leg? A leg. One of your legs are usually longer than another. <laughs> yeah, but most of the time people do. We don't know it, but most of the time people do. So this is an easy demonstration of the power of God, right? Now your left leg's a little longer. So, you're almost even, but you see that this foot is a little bit longer, right? <laughs> you see that? I know you saw that. That makes sense. I can't help it. Now check it out. Come on! Signs of one. Ah, you're deep. That's not good. You're deep, brother. Hallelujah. Country of people with having one leg just a little bit shorter than the other. In every sense, I would say Todd White is as much a magician as he claims to be a man of God. I would go around and look for people that were like limping with obvious sicknesses. Is there any problems at all physically? Uh, my back isn't the best. And I'd go up to them and ask to pray for them. They tell your leg's shorter, your one leg shorter than the other one, and it throws you back out. This is the Holy Ghost film from 2014. This is a really great trick and you're gonna see in a moment here that it is a trick. So what I'll do, regardless of what you believe, I'm gonna pray for you, and Jesus is gonna grow your leg out and heal your back. <laughs> Charlatans and snake oil salesmen have been doing this trick for decades. It's sleight of hand. So Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow right now. Jesus' name. Look at it, see it? Whoa. Look at that. Can you guys see that right there? Yes. It's longer now than the other one. And then and if I was done, if they received it well, which most did, I'd be like, oh, God loves you so much. Have a good day. I'm not like out here to say you need to No, dude. God loves you, bro. And that's it, man. December 5. Man. Now we're going to see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now, this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. Now, he's doing this very slowly over time, but it's painfully obvious when you speed up the clip. And what he is doing is the most hateful thing you could possibly do for someone. 
Men like Todd White preach a gospel that is centered on love. The problem is it's not biblical love. Fine feelings? It's fine, yeah. Because it wasn't hurting anyway. Yeah. It is the leg lengthening trick that is absolutely the mark of a charlatan. Mark of a charlatan. Still don't believe he's a false teacher and false prophet? Man, y'all being deceived. Let's keep going. I just want to point this out real quick. Here you go. You got a Warriors of Deliverance, right? At this little place here. You know, it ain't free. Uh, these people are paying money, so they're going to charge you money for the gospel. But notice Marcus Rogers is there. And look at, look at uh, old uh, 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 Daniel Adams. So they're coming together, yet they don't agree on, on the same doctrine. Marcus believes that is water baptism and there is uh, 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 Jesus Christ is the almighty and there is no other. And that uh, uh, he doesn't believe in the Trinity yet. He does believe in the Trinity, Daniel. He doesn't believe in water baptism. And uh, but notice this, they're both divorced and remarried. In fact, make sure you check out the video that we did exposing Marcus Rogers on his adultery. And man, we went over everything when it comes to divorce and remarriage. Any kind of questions you got, it's going to be right here answered for you when it comes to divorce and remarriage. If anybody is divorced and remarried while their first wife or husband is still living, they are committing adultery. They have done uh, 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 the opposite of God's rules and regulations. So make sure you check this out, this video, so that it can help you with your walk when it comes to divorce and remarriage. Anybody that's divorced or marriage, I can't stress this enough. Make sure you watch the video exposing Marcus Rogers because we go into deep depth when it comes to the divorce and remarriage. So you would think, well, they get along with divorce and remarriage. They got three different wives or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Chasing after their lust as God condemns, uh, humping house to house like dogs. Well, you would think this stuff would be free, right? Well, to get a ticket over here to sit in one of the best seats there is, you got to pay $64 to attend to listen to men. Can you imagine that? Paul or Jesus didn't charge money to, for them to come talk to him and to heal them and deliver them. After what Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel without charge. Not $65 a ticket, not $100 a ticket to come see me. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. Paul said, and when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man, even though he needed certain things, uh, 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 needed this and that. I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied in all things I kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. Paul said he was chargeable to no man. Yet they helped him with supplies and stuff like that to keep living. He wasn't out there being rich off the gospel. Now this video struck me. He's telling people not to be condemned of divorce and remarriage. If you're divorced, it's okay, no big deal. I've been divorced three times. Watch and listen to this. The nation from divorce, I command it to be healed. In Jesus' name, being walked away from, being abandoned, I command it to be healed. There it is. Somebody help her with that baby. He is playing on emotions. He didn't get that from God. God ain't vague like that. He going to know. He going to tell you the person name, the person what's going on and, and, and this and that, the time and date that he had. She had the divorce or she had this or whatever it was. God is not vague like this when it comes to prophecy, y'all. These are lies. These are men that play on people's emotions. And it's always the women and children that fall for this crap. And some of you men will be in this crazy crap. Watch 
Can I tell you something? God doesn't care. Yeah, it's okay. God will never divorce you. Get ready for the best years of your life. Wow. I've been married three times, that man just told her. In case you didn't hear it, we're going to go put, put uh, play it again for you. Because that's awful. This is a living adulterer. And he's telling you he's been married three times. Awful. Wow, man, that is just awful to listen to. You say, Kurt, he's just giving her the love. No, he's not telling her to go back to her first husband. He's telling her, it's all right, no big deal. God doesn't divorce you. That's true. God does not, div he divorced Israel and they, he came right back to him. But when you go against God's rules and regulations, look what God says. You can't divorce and remarry somebody else when God says, uh, in Luke 16, 18, whoever put away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whoever married her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So if she was to go and marry somebody else because of his foolish talking, not only is she going to be in adultery, the man that she's with is going to hell too with her because she, that's, not her, that's not her wife. That's somebody else's wife. So he's now in an adultery and it's an adultery train leading people to hell. God is not going to change his word on judgment day, ladies and gentlemen. This is very important. I want y'all to hear me loud and clear. God's people do not go against his word. Pay attention to the doctrine of Christ. And does his doctrine line up with God's word? And if it does not, Get away from these people because one lie can lead you to hell. Can two walk together lest they agree? No. Two can't come together lest they agree. Why is he getting along with everyone that's not of God or got a different doctrine? I ain't standing with nobody that go against God's word or, or uh, says there's a trinity, says there's a, no water baptism, doesn't believe in Acts 2.38, is out here doing magician roles. Out here telling people, uh, uh, giving people a hope, a, a false sense of hope. Instead of telling them what God said, lying to them. Somebody that condones divorce and remarriage. Get away from these people. Somebody that condones women preachers. Get away. Run. These are not people of God. Let me show you this. Everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So not everyone that calls on the name Lord, Lord, Jesus is going to heaven. Many will say to me, Jesus says, in that day, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works in their own opinion, in their own thinking, in their own doing things. Verse 23, and then Jesus said, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, sin. When you go against God's word, it's sin. And Jesus tell them, you can do all these things. And still God not know you and cast you to hell. I warned you, my brothers and sisters, stay away from this man. He's a devil.